Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. The Ukrainian ambassador was urgently summoned to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and was informed of the Polish government's protest against the statements made by President Vladimir Zelensky at the United Nations General Assembly that some European Union countries, including Poland, were faking solidarity. We launched a temporary sea export corridor from our ports and we are working hard to preserve the land routes for grain exports. And it is alarming to see how some in Europe, some our friends in Europe, play out solidarity in political theater, making thriller from the grain. And they may seem to play their own role, but in fact, they are helping, helping set the stage to a Moscow actor. The commitment of the United States is essential for European security, Poland's President Andrzej Duda said on Tuesday. The United States was instrumental in the reconstruction of Western Europe in the aftermath of war and in fending off the threat posed by the Soviet Union throughout the Cold War. It is too often that Europe tends to forget that it owes this, its security and prosperity to the U.S. commitment and presence. In Poland, we recall this very well. That is why Poland's top priority for the time of our presidency of the European Union in the first half of 2025 will be enhancing transatlantic relations and cooperation between the EU and the United States of America. Speaking to Polish media after he gave his speech, Duda said Ukraine should remember that it receives help from Poland amid a deepening dispute between the countries over agricultural imports. I understand that there are business circles that have interests in Ukraine and would like to sell grain as quickly as possible at the lowest possible price. We have to defend ourselves against this. That is our obvious responsibility. There is a clash of interests here. What can I say? If Ukraine files a complaint against us to the World Trade Organization Tribunal, we will go before the tribunal to explain the situation. This is then a legal dispute. We will act on this basis. However, it would be good for Ukraine to remember that it receives help from us and to remember that we are also a transit country for Ukraine. While Poland remains a staunch supporter of Ukraine in the face of the Russian invasion, the two countries have been at odds over Poland's recent extension of a ban on imports of Ukrainian grain, which Warsaw says is needed to protect its farmers. While Ukraine appealed to on Tuesday for a constructive dialogue, a World Trade Organization spokesperson confirmed that Kiev had taken the first step in a trade dispute by filing a complaint to the global trade body. This past weekend, at the town of Yorba Linda in California, 60 kilometres from Los Angeles, was the site of a Polish Harvest Festival. The Harvest Festival took place in the John Paul II Centre in a Polish Paris, which also houses the Helena Monjewska Polish School. The 44th Harvest Festival was held in the town of Yorba Linda, Orange County. The Harvest Festival is celebrated here not only by the Polish community, many Americans also come to the festival. I've been here many times, probably at least the last 10 years. Uh, I cook saw Polish sausage. We embrace all cultures in our community, particularly the Polish community. I want them to feel warm, friendly here in this city. We embrace you, we embrace the culture. I'm so impressed with how your children go to a Polish school on the weekends to learn their culture and the language, and then they dress in these beautiful costumes that we see displayed here today. Preparations for the festival took many weeks. This is my 34th Harvest Festival, at which I have been helping for some 25 years, so to speak. I'm responsible for the whole thing. It's called setup in English, that is, setting it all up, making sure it's in the right place, making it look good. The longest queues are at the food stands. You could also buy goods from Poland. There has been more and more food in this kitchen every year for the past 27 years. And this year it is really a lot. From Tuesday to Friday we prepared 4,500 stuffed cabbage rolls, pierogi that we've made before, cabbage and bigos, you name it. People came to listen to music and watch performances by folk groups. Performers included Polania from Yorba Linda, Krakusi from Los Angeles, Polish Smiki and Polonaise from San Diego, as well as a Slovak and Bulgarian folk band. However, this year the star of the evening was the band Lombard.
We always come back here with great pleasure. To be more specific, this is probably our fourth concert on the West Coast. We love the Polish community living here. We are friends. We have kept in touch with Darek Swankowski and Grozina Swankowska for many years. So we are very happy that once again, thanks to their efforts, we could come here with the Lombard Band. What more can we say? Well, every time it's a great experience. Just visiting the Polish community and attending these concerts is a beautiful experience. The audience had a great time with the famous hits from before the emigration. For Telewizja Republika, Margarita Schulz. King Charles III and Queen Camilla have begun a three-day state visit to France. The Elysee Palace said the British monarch and the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, are expected to touch on topics close to their hearts during their talks, such as the environment, the promotion of reading and youth entrepreneurship. At the start of the three-day visit, King Charles and French President Emmanuel Macron took part in a ceremony at the Arc de Triomphe in Paris on Wednesday, attended by military service personnel, past and present. Joined by their wives, Queen Camilla and Brigitte, Macron and the King lit a flame at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and witnessed a flypast of both nations' air forces. The Patrouille de France and the Red Arrows, the aerobatics display teams of both nations' air forces, flew over the Champs-Élysées for the occasion. Amid the highlights of the trip will be a state dinner at the Palace of Versailles, where blue lobster and a selection of French and English cheeses will be on the menu. The 74-year-old king and the 45-year-old president will set out to build on a relationship already bolstered by their communications over Notre Dame. Charles had written to Macron when the cathedral burnt down and the pair will visit the cathedral on Thursday. According to the original plans, the British monarch's visit to France was supposed to take place in March, before his coronation, but this was postponed by the Elysee Palace due to extensive protests and unrest in France. Azerbaijani armed forces have launched an anti-terrorist operation in the separatist Nagorno-Karabakh region, home to an Armenian population. Azerbaijani authorities confirmed a ceasefire in Nagorno-Karabakh less than a day after the first artillery shellings. The government in Baku announced yesterday the launch of an anti-terrorist operation in Nagorno-Karabakh. The launch of the offensive was justified by the hostile actions of the Armenian army, as a result of which Azerbaijani soldiers and civilians were killed. The Armenian side spoke of an unjustified invasion. Today, news reached us that military operations have been halted. An agreement has been reached. Units of the Armenian armed forces deployed in the Karabakh region of the Republic of Azerbaijan, illegal Armenian armed groups, have laid down their weapons and left their posts and combat positions. The agreement between Stepanakert and Baku was mediated by the Russians. The Armenian Prime Minister did not participate in the negotiations and said that there were no Armenian troops in the Upper Karabakh area. Of course, we have taken note of the text of the agreement, although the Republic of Armenia did not participate in any way in the drafting of this text and was not a party. In any case, we take note of the statement of the ceasefire between Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan. Baku and Yerevan have been in dispute for decades over Nagorno-Karabakh, an Armenian-populated separatist region that is part of Azerbaijan under international law. An uh, act of the attempts of Azerbaijan to ethnically cleanse the region, uh, the, the region and uh, that's um, um, accomplished uh, uh, all, the, all the intention which has been visible for quite, uh, quite a long time. Uh, we've seen the statements of Azerbaijan uh, about the so-called humanitarian corridors which cannot be described otherwise as the invitation for the Armenians of Nagorno-Karabakh to start the exodus of the region. History is difficult for Armenians for millennia. It's never been easy region for us. It's continued like this. But I think uh, the, the topic you're starting, that's exactly the issue to be discussed in the framework of the dialogue between Stepanakert and, and Baku. The most important uh, topic uh, for us is to ensure human rights and security of Armenians. The most recent iteration of this conflict occurred in 2020, when Azerbaijan regained control of part of the territory and Russia deployed its peacekeeping contingent there. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland daily business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.